Hey guys, it's Junior. Welcome back to my channel here at Horsepower Warehouse. I have a little bit of a confession for you guys. I've been hiding stuff from you. I've got some stuff going on back here in the shop that it's for future content. I've been putting off making this video because I just can't show everything in one go. I have some really important stuff to share with you today, some really awesome stuff to go through, um, but we can't cover it all today. So if you see some stuff in the background going on, please know that I haven't forgotten about it. I will cover it in the future. You're gonna have to like and hopefully subscribe to my channel and hold on with me because we will go over all this stuff, I promise you guys. But without further ado, let's jump right into this fresh out of the paint booth we actually have two cars that have been completed and this is representative of several hundred hours per car so please excuse me if i'm a little bit excited about this but me and the crew have been just absolutely going at it and i think i think we're producing some of the best mid-year corvettes and cars in general that um that you're going to get anywhere in the world so let me just first reintroduce you to our rotisserie 63 coupe this is a flared car so it is a little bit of a deviation from my traditional oem plus style builds like my 66 nassau car here which is by the way just about completed this one though man this was hundreds of hours of just body work in order to get the paint the body to where all the gaps are in alignment all the doors fit nicely headlight buckets i mean the problem with the corvettes and i think that's why a lot of shops don't want to dive into them is because it's a lot more straightforward to do a steel bodied car I am not restricted in the least to doing just C2 Corvettes. It's just, I have a lot of them because I feel like a lot of shops, they just simply don't want to take them because it's too much of a headache. You need to know just as much about fiberglass repair as you need to know about general automotive restoration. And what do you get when you approach it correctly and you spend your time efficiently, but you know what you're going after, you get this. This car, look at the, the gaps on the doors. Pay attention to the alignment of the body line. I mean, everything is just so, so nice in terms of gaps and fitment. There is, there is no perfect, but we try to get it just as good as you're ever gonna get a C2 Corvette. This car came out just phenomenal. These guys, or this family, should absolutely be blown away with this paint job. Now you guys know I'm real stickler about coverage, about getting down into places that traditionally you'll find dry spots on lesser paint jobs. But this level of paint job goes so much further than just paint coverage and quality of paint. Um, you know, those are the, where you start on a high quality paint job, but I mean, just the, the body work. I mean, look at the body line around that flare. Look at the, the radius of the body line. It matches perfectly. It's just, as you go through, big, um, big props to my painter. He did a phenomenal job. Let me just look through the lens and kind of try to catch some light for you guys so you can see how slick this paint came out. This car has not had a final polish. I am not going to clay bar and polish the car until, of course, I'm further on in the restoration. But man, did that, the, for a white car, and white is a, a kind of a harder car to make pop. And I'll show you in comparison to another car, I'm about to show you another car that came out of the booth. When you do me metallic cars, I mean, they really, they grab light and they shine. White, if you don't do it to this level, it, it's not as impressive, but man, this is super impressive to me, guys. I love how this car came out. Of course, I've painted the engine bay. The full ro rolling chassis was already done prior to it going to paint. So just really fantastic. So proud to where we've come. I'll actually, I'll throw a uh, image up now of a picture of when it was delivered to me in the trailer. This, this car, um, 
yeah, it was pretty rough, uh, needless to say, but no longer, guys. This thing is gorgeous, so I'm super, super proud of this. I wanted to ask you guys a question while I'm standing here. Would you be interested, and I've already kind of talked with Michael, the owner of the company, um, would you guys be interested in a leg up program or a step up program where I take your car, do the body, do the full rolling chassis, deliver it to you like this, so that way you've got all of the major work done, all of the underlying components already finished, and you can do the finished work at home in your garage. That would be a feasible project to do on the weekends in a year or so time frame for you. And that is something that I would probably feel more comfortable you know giving you as a consumer for a restoration versus trying to find a painter um, trying to find the correct guy to do your engine transmission rear end you know the powder coating all of the stuff that I do here those are major hurdles and I recognize that as you know a, a standard person in their house trying to do a restoration um, would you be interested in me putting together a, a step up package where basically you know of course it'd be a lot less labor to not finish this car. So there would be considerable savings. And you, I feel like that is a, a big enough gulp that people could probably do that with a few friends within a year in their garage if they you know, kind of set their mind to it. And yeah, let me know what you think down below. This chassis is for the white 67 coupe over there. It is now pretty much a complete roller. As you can see, it's come out really, really nice. Um, I am going to not spend a whole lot of time on the chassis because you guys have seen me build these time and time again, so probably nothing new for you guys. I don't just assemble parts here, I nitpick. Like for instance, this had the wrong shifter on it, so I had to buy a new shifter. I completely blew the new shifter apart. I polish all of the friction surfaces so that way, you know, when you actually actuate the shifter, it's like a, a bolt action uh, type deal. Uh, I consider myself more of a coach builder than an assembler. I'm trying to make things, I'm trying to refine them as I put them together to make for ultimately, you know, a, a nicer driving experience. And that carries through. That's the motto, I guess, of my entire build. So my 64 here is ready to go to paint. That's going to be next up. 63 convertible, I'm just, just chomping away. I am uh, doing engine bay right now. I've got a lot of the interior done, so short of the, the um, instrument cluster, that's where I'm at right now on interior. So I'll show you guys that one in the future. We are gonna pretend like we don't see this car. Um, and yes, that that is what you think. An entirely exposed carbon fiber uh, GTR R35 with a 1300 or so horsepower absolutely incredible car but we're gonna skip right past that today because i have another car fresh out of the booth for you guys my 1967 goodwood green car another car that is representative of hundreds of hours to paint the reason being not only because the cars are all stripped down to bare fiberglass but if you look at the door gaps if you look at the profile of the body line if you look at the alignment of all the critical areas, everything has been made just to a level that is pretty much unheard of in the Corvette world. And I'll try to go slow and let the fluorescent lights, you know, kind of grab the, the body so you can see how smooth this car came out. Another problem when you get to the, and I'll stop right here when I say this, when you're laying down fine metallic, it has a tendency to want a tiger stripe or get blotchy. You have to be really, really critical of air pressure, temperature, and humidity, and overlay distance from the paint. There's a lot of ways that you can screw this up, needless to say. Um, my guy, holy cow. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for doing this for me. And I know, you know, it's, it's nothing new to him. He's been doing it for decades, but this is absolutely blows me out of the it blows me out of the water. I cannot believe how nice this metallic came out on this Goodwood green car. It is, it almost has like a gold reflection. Now mind you again, this is not fully polished. I won't fully polish the car until we're further on in the restoration, but holy moly guys. If I had a Goodwood green car, that's what I want my paint to look like. No doubt about it. After the polish, it's gonna look absolutely absurd. Um, no doubt, but 
thank you. Thank you to my crew for just going above and beyond and producing things that I can be so proud of. You know, it's, it's one thing for, for me to try my hardest, but this takes the entire village, um, you know, working together with the same goal in mind, which is, you know, just produce the best stuff that we can, and that way we will always be busy. Um, if you park this next to another Goodwood Green car at a car show, you don't have to say any words. This car will do all the talking for you, and that's all I need it to do. And that's my requirement of my people is when we're doing these cars, let's do it the best possible. So that way we have not only repeat customers, but everyone that sees this car is gonna go, who, who did that, man? You know, it's almost disappointing to spend money elsewhere when something like that is available. My Bloomington car is here for final shakedown. Um, we did the chassis on this one. Uh, everything has come out fantastic. So just working out a few final bugs on the car before the customer takes it out and enjoys it. This one was a consignment that we sold. So I'm just doing a rundown on a couple little things on that one. Our 67, this is the body for the chassis that I had showed you over there. The fiberglass work continues. When I do my fiberglass work, I want it to be top, top, top notch, as you guys can imagine. Um, so what I do is I try to identify any fixes that have occurred in the life of the car, and then I will look at each fix and determine whether or not you know I'm happy with it. How do I do that? I'll get a prying tool or utensil usually up under it. If I can peel the return, if I can peel the repair or the patch up, man, that's not good fiberglass work. My patches, my fixes, you will not peel up with a prying tool. They, they are, you will destroy the entire panel trying to get my stuff up. Another thing is, what, just for instance, this is where the bumper mounts to the car. You can see we have a pretty good crack and hole that developed because they over tightened the bumper. I need to do my structural repair on the inside. So I know it's gonna be dark up in here and you can't see, but I need to do my repair up in here so that way you don't see anything and my painter has a good fiberglass surface to work with out here and you have a, a cosmetic surface out here, but you want a structural repair in here. So there is a lot of different ways to fiberglass a car and it goes more than just cloth versus matte or different types of resins I mean there there you can get into that and we do but um, it, I have found that most people don't know how to do fiberglass repair work and I guess that's the nicest way to say it um, based on all of these cars that I've done over all these years by and far away when I see a good fiberglass repair job nowadays I am I, it's I'm like, like the Indian that has the tear you know of uh, well, I guess it's not joyous, but I'm, I'm blown away when I see a, a really good fiberglass repair is what I'm trying to say. This is another car we're gonna have to ignore for today, but I just wanted to get your guys' opinion on these custom-made wheels. I ordered these for a different project altogether. That is a uh, street shop billet rear end, by the way, to go with the complete street shop chassis. I'm not gonna spoil any more about this car yet. But these wheels I had custom made for another project that I'm not going to talk about too much more today. But the caliber clearance is just perfect. These are made by Shot. They're actually called Shot Turbines. These are 19s in the front and 20s in the rear. Of course, staggered fitment. They are designed to be a modern interpretation of the turbines that you would get on factory from the C2s. So, man, can't wait to show you guys. I, I've got, I'm not gonna spoil it. I've already probably said too much. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And until next time, take care.